So we're going to do a little overview of the interface for Heritage Quest Online. So from here, you see that we're on the home page. This is where you'll be when you access the database from the library's website. Note at the top left of the screen, the home screen button, as well as the search button. You can use those for navigation when you're using the website. In this red banner here, uh, there are links to the search page, research aids, and maps. So first I want to take a look at the research aids with you. So we'll click that and it's going to take us to another page here. And it's got a few guides to help you while you're using Heritage Quest. Um, we're just going to take a look at the getting started one first. Uh, this has a variety of search tips. Um, as you can see here, they have Ancestry Ann's top 10 search tips, as well as some other ones below. Um, these kind of include a variety of things, but for example, one is that um, including at least one location in your search will help you find what you're looking for. Um, and then you can also try a wildcard search uh, when you're searching for a name. So for example, um, if you didn't know how a name was spelled, you could use a question mark to uh, replace the letter that you're not sure about. Or you could use an asterisk, which would replace zero or more letters if you weren't sure about maybe an ending of a name or something like that. In this middle box, you'll see some tips for using the census records. Um, and then it also has some historical information about the census. Uh, for example, you have to wait 70 years before you can get specific information from a census like names and addresses. Um, so that's why you'll see on the website there are only census records from the 1950s backwards. On the right, you'll see Beyond the Basics, and that's just some information for somebody who may be a more advanced searcher. So as you get more comfortable with using Heritage Quest, um, you can take a look at that. It has some information about African American family research, which can be a bit more difficult, and also black sheep research, if you know a family member was maybe not in touch with the rest of the family. So now that we've looked at the research aids, we're going to move on to maps. So we'll see that up here. I'm going to click. And it'll take us to a guide of using the censuses um, by map. So you can look at how state boundaries changed over time, along with state lines and county lines uh, within the state. Um, so for example, I'm going to show you New Jersey. So you can take a look here, and I'm going to click on the 1840 map. Um, so you can see in white here is what we would now call Gloucester, Camden, and Atlantic counties um, from 1790 to 1840. Um, they were all considered Gloucester County. So this could kind of change the way that you're looking for ancestors because what you may consider Camden County, um, they would have considered Gloucester. So that's important to know when you're doing your search. Um, so these can determine again where your ancestors were and how the geography has changed from then until now. Um, and they do that for all 50 states. So you can take a look at that based on, you know, where you're trying to find your ancestors. So after that, I'm gonna take us back home using the home button here. So I wanted to call out uh, just right over here are the highlighted collections that you can search. Uh, city directories, census map guides, the Indian census rolls, and then the interesting one over here is the U.S. Freedmen's Bank record, um, and you can use that if you're interested in doing research on your ancestors who may have been enslaved people. So after that, we're going to go over to the search screen, which we'll use by this button or this button here. So I'm going to click. So this section contains all collections available to search. Uh, for example, you'll see the census, wills and probates, military records, public records down here. You'll also see the cemetery search, which can be helpful. Um, and obviously there's quite a bit more here as well. Um, they have additional collections down at the bottom. You can search the map and photo collections. And then you can also do international search records. Um, and then this button down here that takes us to more U.S. records takes us to the U.S. vital records. But 
This is all of the collections that Heritage Quest has for you to take a look at, so we're going to do that in a bit. So just to kind of wrap up here, um, there are an abundance of records. They have billions of records for you to search, um, but it's important to remember that you have to search by individual collection. There's no cross-searching, so you'll see here that's why they've got everything separated. So you do have to search that way. Um, you can't, you know, group everything together and search for a name. But each collection will have unique search fields, uh, though some, like name, birthday, and things like that, will carry over across collections. So, for example, if we wanted to take a look at the census, um, the fields that we find in the census are going to be different than something that we find in, say, the city directory. So when we look at the federal census fields, you'll see first name, last name, birth year, all that kind of stuff. But then they have more extensive fields in this um, record search, such as marital status, dwelling number, etc. Um, and then when you search for, say, in the city directory, we'll take a look at that. Um, it's a little less extensive. Um, they have the keyword, and they also have the publication title, so that's a little bit different. And you'll notice that um, throughout all of the collections that you search, they'll be a little bit different. Um, and then I wanted to point your attention to this box up here that'll show up when you're about to search collections. Um, it'll have some information about how to use the collection that you're searching in. Um, so make sure you use this to find some helpful tips. But now we're going to head back to the home screen here. And this has been an overview of the interface to get you familiar with how to use Heritage Quest online.